From Low Tree Studios, featuring topics that serve as an informative and entertaining break from life's daily grind, this is the Jason and Mindy podcast. My name is Jason. And my name is Mindy. Hello, wife. Coming up, uh, dogs smell <laughs> stress in humans. Mm, our dog does. Absolutely. And uh, our CDs on the way back. CD Ooh. players, that is, and CDs in general. I hope I'll, so, because I have a ton. Yeah, I know. I'll discuss. Uh, also, it's estimated that a little over 40% of people do this at every meal. Mm. Can Mindy guess what it is without, you know, cheating? Because I got accused of cheating on yesterday's. You know what I mean? <laughs> not cool. Not cool. Uh, and Mindy, what are you sharing? I'm sharing a little thing about funner summer. Funner summer. Uh-huh. Ways to have a funner summer. Yes. A more Possibly. Fun summer. Okay. Possibly. Well, we'll find You'll out. find out. Okay, mm-hmm. good. Yep. And uh, you have a random question and all that stuff. Uh, uh, welcome to those of you listening <laughs> on your favorite podcatcher and those of you tuning in on YouTube and welcome Mindy. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Everything going okay? It is. It is. It is. That's good to hear. Yeah. That's good to hear. Yeah. I don't think much, you know, could go wrong. It's true. We don't leave. It's true. We're at home all the time. It's nice. Nothing really changes. It's a nice thing. Yeah. Got to get in the pool more this week, I think. That's my goal. My goal this week, get in the pool more. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But we're getting into those. You know, it's weird how it's been delayed this summer. The, the after rain? The afternoon rains. Yeah. Like, it's strange. Last year, there was rain every single day, it felt like. It's been dry every single day. Although, of course, uh, yeah. two days ago, it just poured. Yes, it did. I fixed the sprinklers. Now, if you've been very a long, happy about that, you've been, you? I am proud of myself. <laughs> if you've been a long time listener, you know that plumbing is not uh, something I'm very good at. In fact, usually if I do something related to plumbing, it just it gets progressively worse. <laughs> yes, we've had many yeah. podcasts talking about that. So here we have these old irrigation lines and I, I found a way to fix a, one of the ones that was was leaking and our grass was getting brown because it wasn't getting all the grass and stuff mm. like that. So very proud of myself. Did that over. The, I did my manly duties over the weekend. I yes. felt, felt very good about that. All right. Well, that's enough, enough about me. Let's, enough, enough of the man cards. Yeah. Though. Yeah. N- enough of that. Right. Yeah. yeah. If it can't be a Lamborghini, if it can't be a Lamborghini knowledge, right. right. Uh, plumbing re- referencing an old, yeah. Plumbing makes me a man. All right. Let's get into this. Yes. But it, but does it really? I mean, I've always been, you know, a different, you know, all the, like, I think there's this expectation that, you know, I'm supposed to, at least from family members that I'm supposed to be this guy that, you know, will rebuild a kitchen or, you know, work on a car. And okay. that's not me, you know? No, it's that's not, not who you. I am. I, no. I, I, I do artsy fartsy stuff. <laughs> that's my forte. That's what I'm good at. Leave me alone. Okay, you do your thing, I'll do mine. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, dogs. We love our dog. He's mm-hmm. an amazing dog. He is. How long do you think he's going to be with us? I don't know. Don't ask <laughs> me that question. I hope. It's very sensitive for you. For many years. Yeah, he's doing great. He's such I, a good and boy. Now he's at the age where he's, any little thing happens, I'm thinking it's the worst, yeah. you know. Yep. But he's so chill now. He, he finally has gotten to that place where he's, Pretty relaxed. He's, I mean, he's pretty annoying. You've made him that way. You, you feed him and you've, you've, you've given him, you know, I human know. food. And now he begs and, and whines if he doesn't get what he wants. Oh, he, he's, it's getting pretty bad. It's pretty funny though when he, yeah, you think cause it's Cause I, well, I won't give him some. I get tough on him sometimes. Uh huh. And then he, he'll groan cause he's usually he'll sit by the side of the couch where I'm at. He does not ask me for much, by the way. No, he does not cause he knows he, doesn't Won't get, get away it. With it. Doesn't get much. Anyway, uh, this is about dogs. That's why we were talking about our dog. <laughs> dogs can smell stress in humans, mm-hmm. and it alters their own behavior. I've, we've witnessed it. Yep. Uh, University of Bristol researchers say they found that our pet canines experience emotional contagion, which means it's 
our emotions are contagious, mm -hmm. uh, from the smell of human stress, leading them to make more pessimistic choices and affecting their ability to learn. Wow. Mm -hmm. Previous research in humans suggests that the smell of a stressed person subconsciously affects the emotions and choices made by others near them, which led to led the researchers to wonder if the same is true with dogs. And apparently it is, but that's interesting. Previous research in humans suggests that we smell the stress of a person subconsciously or the smell of a stressed person subconsciously. I, I don't know that we do. I don't, I don't smell. I can sense stress in other people, but is it because I smell it? I don't think you, They're to me that's humans, weird. Yeah. Like I think you use, okay, so what sense would it be? Right. Maybe it's it's such a low low grade like I don't know at least for humans it's we saying have that touch I don't sight hearing taste All right, what, what, are you, what are you going through I'm all going, the senses for Well because I'm trying to figure out what it is when say you walk up to uh may or you don't walk up but say you see a couple <laughs> you know arguing or It's visual Right. It's more sight than smell. Yeah. I don't think it would be smell. Well, maybe it's just something we subconsciously smell. Not to digress away from the dogs, but I guess the well, the reason why this is interesting to me is because they were they studied it in humans first, and then it led them to study it in dogs, and huh. they found that the same thing. I would I would see that say think that it's more uh, magnified in dogs because they have a really incredible sense of smell. Compared to humans, I don't think we have as good of a sense of smell as they do. Right. But I can absolutely, um, you know, Blue, our dog, when we're when there's anxiety or we're stressed, I totally can tell. But I totally think can tell. I think even with dogs, it's more sight. Really, you think? I, I don't do. Know. I think he visually hmm. he looks because your dog will follow you if you look at your dog's eyes. He follows everything you do, and they 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 said too often with just the one eye. There's a one eye that's more dominant that will follow you. Yeah. And um, so I even tend to think... Dog, that it's sight? It's I, sight. Because I think he, it's everything. I think it's all your senses because mm -hmm. I can sense just by standing next to someone whether they're stressed or not. So can I. Without, without visually seeing it, you know, you can feel really? the anxiety in the air. It's, it's, it's almost, it's a very subconscious thing. Yeah. But maybe it is something that you also smell. It's just, you know... Also, you know, the thing about hearing, like there's levels of, of hearing that we can't hear, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that it's, it's coming into our body. Mm -hmm. We just can't make out what it is or whatever. Um, yeah, that was, that was a very, I was very scientific in the way that I said that, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it is interesting when they throw out those scientific data, Studies, yeah. you know, I, everything is so scientific, right? How about just what, what is it like for real? Well, like, how, how do they know it's smell? That's the thing that's interesting to me is like you, you, and how do you, how do you put a dog through that test? How do you put a dog through that test? Mm -hmm. You know, and how do you know that it's coming how, their that their anxiety and their deficiency in learning is coming from their sense of smell? I mean, because I think about myself when I, I can feel when someone's stressed, I can feel when you're stressed, especially when you're closer to someone, you can definitely feel when they're stressed. But perfect strangers, if you're standing in a line, you can tell if someone's stressed without, is it is it because I smell it or is it because I just generally feel it in, yeah, the, in the atmosphere? Right. I think humans, we generally feel it. Same but, with dogs. But possibly with dogs, though, your body chemistry changes. Maybe. Yeah. And they, because they have such great sniffers. They do. They have a huge sniffer. <laughs> Ours does. He's so cute. He does. He's licking something right now. Who knows what? He's always licking something now. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Next thing, Mindy. CDs. Yeah. We got a lot of CDs still. Whole cabinet full of CDs. I have so many. So many. Uh, I don't think that they sound any better than just like listening on your streaming platform. Probably not anymore. Probably the streaming stuff's gotten pretty good now. Yeah. Do you remember people, people used to complain, you know, that MP3s didn't sound as good as a CD or a record or something like that? Yeah. I, I still like the CD. I think that was the best form of music. It was pretty good. They skip, though. They get scratched and... 
Yeah. Get pretty funky. But anyway, CDs are on their way. Are CDs on their way back is the question. Mm, I hope so. Well, they're definitely on their way back into a new Subaru, Mindy. Uh, as a throwback option, the latest generation WRX has a number of mm. finishing touches available, allowing buyers to add all manner of extras such as mud flaps, uh, an engine underguard, and a first aid kit. But the most interesting, or at least for 90s kids, is the optional CD player neatly fitted under the center console armrest. Not many manufacturers even offer a CD option anymore, but if you still have some discs kicking around like we do, uh-huh. Subaru's $375 CD player kit might be worth splashing out on. I would definitely buy it. On the other hand, you could instead select the automatic transmission option for just $300. Oh, I would probably do that as well. So you do both. So it would be six hundred dollar <laughs> ticket for me. Yeah, I'm. I, I would prefer a manual. I like manual. Uh, we the the mini we had before. Had what was is it with a guy just that just it. likes a stick in his hand? <laughs> that's it. Mm, yeah, that's exactly that's it. it. Yeah, you feel like you're in control of it all. You know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. But uh, yeah, I just like the the feeling of driving, actually driving a car. It's it's like uh you know that's a nice uh, it's a nice feeling, mm-hmm. but I don't know that I'd care for this. I, I like getting. I, I I have a CD player in my car. We have a CD player in the truck. How often are you using that CD player? I think we would use it more if we traveled more, obviously. But when we we're just we we draw- with the truck, you have the um, ability to play from your phone, so yeah. that's cool. Exactly. But I don't have that at all in my car, so I probably should put my CDs. You should, but the (laughs) point I'm trying to make is this is a brand new car. It will have all of those fancy features. Why get a CD player? What a waste. That's a waste of $300. Yeah, but so is my CDs rotting away in my drawers. That's true. But you already paid for them. It's just they're now they're just (laughs) taking up space. Yeah. So still still valuable. Okay. Well. Do they have, they don't really have value. They've lost their value for sure. They have. They have. Well, if you're if you're in the market for a WRX, which I had one of those, I loved those cars. I like Subarus. We have a Subaru. Uh, get any, and you also a '90s kid, then order that option. Yes. All right. Yes. Yeah. Where'd our dog go? He's walking around. He is walking around. He like he, like he like he owns the place. You know, like yeah. he pays the mortgage around here. He'd like to think he does. Yeah. All right. Funner summer. Okay. What does the perfect summer look like to you? Mm. Lots of road trips, camping. Are you answering the question for me? No. I'm- oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a rhetorical question? I no, guess just it listen was. up. Rhetorical. Listen. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what does the perfect summer look like? Is it? Uh, Lots of road trips, uh-huh. camping, is it backyard barbecues, okay. golf. Yeah. According to a new survey, mm. the absolutely ideal summer must include the following. Okay. 14 days with loved ones. Okay. Eight sunrises watched. Okay. And 11 dips in the water. Mm-hmm. That's from a poll of 2,000 adults in the U.S. which found that Mm. Some of the most enjoyable things about summer include spending time with family and friends, 44%, enjoying barbecues, 43%, Mm -hmm. longer days, 42%, Yeah, warmer weather, 37%. Of course, we have that all year long. Yes, we do. And swimming, 31%. On the downside, people were also asked about things that can ruin a beautiful summer. Ah, okay. Uh, The top answer was too much heat. Mm-hmm. which we used to live in an area that like well, that. Well, we, we do still. It's pretty damn hot here. Yeah, but I think this is a little more tolerable than that I desert agree. heat. I agree. Uh, triple digits, not fun. Mm-hmm. Following by being sick or injured, and the average person expects to have to deal with one sunburn. Okay. And go through two bottles of sunscreen. Okay, well, let's let's ask ourselves these questions. Yeah. What would ruin a summer? I think a hurricane would ruin a summer out here. Yes, uh, that that for sure would ruin a summer. And do do I need fourteen days with loved ones? 
probably not. I would need more days of dips in the water than I need with loved ones, probably. Because I think it didn't it say only 11 days of water or dips and 14 days with loved ones yeah. or something like that. I need in the summer. I want both. No, 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 no. But it's 11 days. <clears throat> I need more than that. I need like. Equal amount. No, no, no. I need like uh, maybe 60 or 70 days wow. of dips in the water. You only want to get in your pool 11 days in the summer? Well, we get in it more. I'm assuming maybe this this survey is like um, people that deal with winters, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because I want to be in the pool for six, seven months. My sister, she lives in Michigan. Yeah. They barely get their pool open. And it seems like. She'll say maybe a month or two later, it's time to close it back up. It's brutal. It's way brutal. Screw that. Why even have a pool? So if someone like her, though, would only be lucky to have 11 dips. Man, yeah. Then we get way more than that. I mean, I get 11 dips in a, in a month or, you know, more than that. Uh, and then also you're talking about 11 dips. Also, okay, 11 dips in the ocean, maybe during summer. <laughs> you're getting all kidding 11 away. trips to the ocean. Mm -hmm. I'm losing my voice. You hear it? <clears throat> well, we've already had uh, probably a, close to 14 days with family and friends so far, or maybe about seven or eight days. It's Steve was here for about five days, and then David and Stephanie about five days. So we're about 10 days in. Yeah. So we need a little bit more now. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to get it, but. I know. Well, um, how about like, well, so you said hurricane would ruin your it summer. It would. What about you? I think, because um, I think the first summer we were out here maybe because we were acclimating i think too much humidity yeah that was tough the guy it was tough to get used to yeah that would kind of ruin the summer and, like and, it's just been beautiful here and the first year we were here we had two hurricanes yeah that yeah. that was kind of a what what's going on where did we move to yeah 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 all right yeah that's all i got for you yeah summer uh, is 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 my favorite but you know it is kind of summer all year long here yeah, you know, we do get a winter, but it's not very crazy. We talk about this all the time. Okay, but. I just thought of something. What? This has ruined my summer, is not being able to camp during the that summer. That does ruin the summer for us. So it's got a, it's shifting. So mm -hmm. for us, we what would ruin the winter? Not being able to camp. Right. right? You got to think about summer is different here. You know, in California, it was, it was kind of great because... Well, not it was not great in the sense that we didn't really like where we lived, so we tried to escape it all the time. Yeah. So in the middle of summer, you go to the beach because it's cooler. In the middle of winter, you go to the beach because it's warmer. Yes. You know, so we yeah. always try to get away and go to the beach. Here, it's I think in the winter, if we didn't go camping, that would be a bummer. We've really got to get into a rhythm of being able to go yep. somewhere, you know, in the, winter in the here. best time of year here, which is the winter. Yep. Um, so I agree. just saw on Facebook, a, a high school, uh, classmate of mine. I wasn't real, real close to this person, but, uh, she just moved out of California mm -hmm. and I was like, congratulations, mm -hmm. <laughs> you'll love not living in California. But, uh, after all those years of living there, that's kind of, that's kind of, I don't know why I brought that up just probably cause we moved to a different place and, uh, it's, it's different when it, you move somewhere different. The you know, seasons kinda, are different. Totally changes the, everything. Yeah, it really does. You get a different feel for for things. So well, well, yeah, that's all I have. But, um, I, you know, we're right in the middle of summer right now. We are right smack, smack in the middle of it. I think we're literally in the middle. Yeah. So, but it is long here for us. So, so, so summer really lasts until November. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and we're watching, you know, the, the hurricanes and stuff like that. So, uh, thank you for your segment, Mindy. It's time for water cooler. Yay. You're going to have a blast with this one. <laughs> Gonna get this one. Okay. I think you'll get it. Quickly, I think. I'm glad you're you're rooting for me. Yeah, I think okay. Um I think you're gonna get it in less than five. Oh, here we go with the, the yep. number, which I less never than five. Less than you five. jinxed me. Do you realize that right? Maybe. <laughs> just don't let that get in your head. It just did. Okay. <laughs> it's estimated that a little over 40% of people do this at every meal. What is it? 
a little over 40% do this. At every meal? At every meal. They pray. No. There's one. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Wash their hands. No. There's two. If when you get to four, if you don't guess it before, then I'll give you, I'll give you a hint. Oh, well, thanks. Then I got one left. Okay. So when you get to three after this one, I'll give you one, one clue. Yeah, thanks. One clue. Okay. Um, cause 40% is a lot, right? So 40% it's a lot. Do this before dinner. You said, is that a keyword? They do this at every meal. Oh, at every meal. At every meal. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Just one more guess, and then I'll give you I'll give you a a hint. They season their food. See, I knew you'd get close. You're in this forty percent. I am not, however. I'm in this. <laughs> and you sort of already said it, but. Because I said seasoned food. Mm-hmm. So. You're in this 40%. I am not. Pepper. <laughs> I use pepper. I know you don't. Yeah, but what, what I, but I will. What, what, what do I usually not use? Salt. <laughs> why did, why, why the hesitancy? Well, because you, you love do. salt. You salt everything. I know, but you will everything. not use pepper. That's true. I don't, I don't really do a lot of seasoning on my, my meal. I put sauce on my meal. So like. Yeah, it's hot sauce. Yeah. Hot sauce on everything. Yeah. Okay. So. Why, 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 why so negative? <laughs> why, why so negative on the hot sauce? Why, why are you, why are you making fun of me? Cause it's kind of like, um. An insult? An insult to the cook. Oh, really? Is it? But mm-hmm. yet you salt everything that you cook. <laughs> well, I don't try to salt everything because not everybody likes salt. Yeah. So you afterwards put salt on mm-hmm. what you cooked because you know I don't like salt a so lot. So that's the salty. answer, huh? Where's yeah. my drum roll? Salt. Good job, Mindy. With Thanks. a lot of help. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice work. Salt. All right, Jason. Yes. Finish the sentence. Okay. I'd love to. The best summer day ends with. Wow. That's really good. Best summer day ends with. All right. Can I paint the best summer day first? Sure. Why not? So best summer day. And we've had a few of them. Uh, One of them was with uh, when Steve was here. Mm -hmm. We, We went kayaking in the morning we went to the beach in the afternoon uh then we came home we podcasted that wouldn't be part of it but we barbecued so you end the day by coming home from the beach you get in the pool you barbecue yeah. and then you just chill afterwards All maybe right. we had some cigars and we we had a little bit of whiskey now it doesn't have to have it doesn't have to be that but you barbecue and you kind of end the day with a good meal you know good home cooked meal all right, so that's me. You and I are a lot alike, so I'm going to say I'm going to go with gonna say we're camping. Different. Okay. I think the uh, summer day ends with the sunset. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of a lot of places we've camped is either been right on the beach or right on a lake, mm-hmm. and watching the sun go down. Yep, it's awesome. You know, one thing we don't see a lot of is the sunrise as much anymore no. now that we don't get up as early because your thing, your, your segment talked about that. People seeing the sun, at least, at least seeing like it was like eight sunrises or something like that. Uh, I don't think I've seen, I don't think I've seen one this year. One of the best, one of the best things when we worked or where we worked you could, was watching the sun yep, come up. That was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting out there. Right. Right. right first break, break. First yeah. break. Yeah. That was cool. That was the best part of it. <laughs> the, rest, <laughs> the rest sucked. Right. Um, yeah. All right. Good question. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, nice. It it's, fills you with feel goods. Well, the timing's good too. It's it's summer and all that mm-hmm. goodness. So, all right. <laughs> J 
Jason, courage is knowing what not to fear. Yes, absolutely. Sure How do you is. know that, though? You really don't. I don't think you see. I don't. <laughs> I don't think uh, that's an interesting one because I don't think that uh, um, courage lacks fear, though. I think c- courage is 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 pushing through fear because mm. fear is going to exist regardless. You just made up another one. Courage is pushing through fear. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know how many times I push through? I mean, I, I'm driving to a gig on Saturday. I love playing in this band. Love playing in this band. And every time we play, oh, it's just, I feel so free when I'm up there. I'm enjoying myself. All the anxiety goes away. But right it's, before. it's the idle time. So I, I, you kept saying, take a nap, take a nap. I can't take a nap. I can't before a gig. I've got to be doing something. Yeah. And so in the act of that doing, I relax, right? Mm-hmm. So getting my gear around, loading it up, yeah. loading in. It's the waiting around stuff, the driving there where I start to get nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, especially gigs that matter like that one. But yeah, it's... Pu- yeah, I think you're right, though. Cur- pushing through it. I don't think you can't... You, you can't have courage without some sort of fear. There's always fear. I, I think anybody that's doing something that scares them is afraid. I mean, it's it's le- not letting the fear overtake you. It's not letting the fear become more powerful than the courage. Okay, so that fits it. Yeah. Courage is not, is knowing what not to fear. Yeah. So within courage. Is, yeah. is Yeah, knowing what not to fear and also not... Yeah, not 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 being willing to let the fear be more powerful than the than the will to do it. Yep. All right. Well, that concludes our show. It really does, Mindy. You're absolutely right. <laughs> if you love what we do and want more of us, check out our website, LowTreeStudios.com. The yeah. link is provided in the show notes. And also, be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Enjoy your day. Yep. And thank you for listening to the Jason and Mindy podcast where we feature topics that serve as an informative and entertaining break from life's daily grime. We'll be back tomorrow Yep, for the last show of the week. Um, That's right. Fun facts, question of the podcast. Yep. All those good things. All those good things. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.